here and today we have the absolute pleasure we have John McAfee on the show. I've been trying to get the, the details for about two years now so I'm really excited to be able to talk to John today and uh, it's a real pleasure to have you on. Oh thank you very much sir. Your, your accent is strange. You sound, are you French or? Uh, English. I'm, jo- I'm joking with you. Uh, I'm <laughs> I've, I've got a nice English cup of tea on the go as well. <laughs> so uh, you, you can't go too wrong too wrong at all no um so there's a lot actually i've been following your twitter quite closely actually over the last couple of weeks obviously the the whole thing about eating your own genitalia probably one of the best marketing exercises in crypto for a long time uh, if it, it, it added if over a hundred thousand new users to the crypto space now please god you know when we started this a year and a half ago, we we're thinking, how do we, how do we, you know, um, onboard users? How do we make? Because nothing was moving outside the crypto sphere. I mean, we, we had, we have our own newspapers, we have our own blogs, we have our own podcasts, but the general world didn't know. And someone said, well, why don't you predict fifty thousand? I said, no, because someone will believe it for God's sake. And somebody else said, how about a hundred thousand? I said. Might even believe that. Let's do a million. Now, if anybody wanted to run numbers, one million dollars for Bitcoin gives it a market cap greater than the gross domestic product of the entire continent of North America. Nothing. And in two years, then what people say, well, how did you come up with it? I said, well, point set topology. It's a math term. I am a mathematics person. And I do know point set topology. Now, I said it predicts financial um, systems 100%. Please, God, if you looked up point set topology, it is a study of geophysical surfaces and can't possibly be applied. I left trails everywhere. Plus, it's fucking Bitcoin. God damn it was the first. It's an ancient, useless fucking technology. Who and yet, the world is so gullible. And the year before, I claim to have fucked a whale. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you saw that, but um, yes, yes, yes. And I've got 30,000 of um, likes on Twitter. So we, we did some polls. Uh, 20,000 people responded. 16,000 believed I fucked a whale. Do you understand how terrifying that is for an old man like me? I mean, God damn it, when I was your people's ages, we had some goddamn smarts. We were told the world is a slippery motherfucking place. Believe nothing, trust no one, least of all the government. Keep your nose clean. Mm. And privacy is the only thing you have. Well, all of that shit's gone now. It, it's tragic. I, you know, if I could reach to the screen, not to you, sir, but to the people watching and throttle everybody to wake them up. Life is not your phone. It's not the mainstream media. It, it's not some fake fucking news. No, it's real. And it's all around you if you just bother to take a look. But anyway, yes, so that prediction did onboard a lot of users. And we're still astonished that no one bothered to run the fucking numbers. But there you have it. I think it's one of those things, like these days marketing is everything with social media and I just think it was a very clever way to sort of get some some hype behind it some interest yeah, some eyes a lot of interest and and you know people were reading it it was in the 
The Guardian in London and New York Post, people are going, Maccabee's going to eat his genitals because of what? Bitcoin? What the hell is that? Well, good. People are asking now. Just, mm. you know. And I've seen some, some uh, posts and uh, some articles saying that obviously Bitcoin technology is quite old in, in that sense, but there's other technologies that are coming through. It might not be the currency of the future. What is your sort of prediction of where you think sort of blockchain will have its big uses? Well, privacy, obviously. I mean, Bitcoin, Ethereum, these they're not private. They're anything but. I mean, if you send me a Bitcoin or a fraction of one, or I send you forever after, I get to look in your wallet, see how much you have, what's coming in, from whom, what's going out, and from whom, please, God, is that what you want? Hell no. <laughs> now, Ethereum, that's different. It's not private, but God damn it, it's got smart contracts. You can put mm-hmm. distributed applications on that fucking chain. Well, yes, that's some good shit. But the real coins are Monero and Zcash, even though that's a really piss poor privacy. Why would you build a privacy coin with an option to make it public? What the fuck? Were they? <laughs> but whatever. Uh, and SafeX and Apollo and the dozens of others. These are the coins of the future. You know for a fact you don't want people looking at your transactions just because you did business with them. And obviously with the privacy coins, that, that's really about currency uh, on the sort of, the, I suppose, the higher end in terms of, you know, you might send me some uh, privacy coins for X amount of work I did or whatever it is. But there's, there's also a lot more other uses. So things like some of the things I'm seeing in some, I, I work within sort of, uh, call it FMCG, big businesses, Mondelez, those types of places, uh, Cadbury's, that, that we're starting to see the usage in terms of ledgers of, like finances or just tracking products, because that seems to be a big trend worldwide. Where does my product come from? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. If you're using uh, crypto and blockchain to track products, that's spectacular, okay? But if you want a currency that has value, you can't have it public. You can't. I mean, already we're in trouble because the banks, the the the, um, the government get get into the bank with a subpoena and find out records anyway. It's going to take them a month or so. But with... With a non-privacy coin, like, Jesus God, like what Facebook is developing with Libra, fuck me. That's a horror. It's the reverse of what we're trying to do. It actually entraps people. And the government, the, the U.S. government, is going to come out with the digital dollar. China's already coming out with the digital yuan. But those are not cryptocurrency. Um, so, like China's coming out with one, but... But these aren't currencies to free people, to give you privacy and power over your own finances. No, it's the reverse. It's to allow governments to know every single penny that you spend and for what, and every penny that you make and from whom. It's going to be a nightmare police state if we accept them. Now, they're going to do it, and they're going to make uh, privacy coins illegal. We all know that. But who cares? I mean, they made marijuana illegal for 75 years, and everybody smoked it. Please, God, there's no difference. And they'll carry on smoking it, yeah. Pardon? They'll, they'll just carry on smoking it, no matter what they do. Yes, and people are going to carry on using privacy coins no matter what. So please, people, don't panic when governments make it illegal. It, it, it is not a just law to tell you you cannot conduct business in private. I'm sorry. Do you not think with, say, like, let's say somebody works for a big corporate business and they actually track, they get paid in a cryptocurrency, but then that's tracked by the government of what they get paid and they take their taxes from it. Do you not think that's potentially a good idea in terms of, because a lot of stuff, especially in the UK, there's... I don't believe in taxes. In America, taxes are unconstitutional. We didn't have any until 1913. And before 1913, we were the industrial power of the world. In countries where there's no income tax, they are the most productive. Look it up, people. The 10 most productive countries in the fucking world have no tax. Taxation is what kills countries, people, economy, motivation. Jesus, it's a cheap way to run a government. It's a sneaky way. No, governments are supposed to fend for themselves. That's what America did for 150 years. And it fended very well. We're not going to give you a goddamn dime. You're the government. Your job to get money. You can't take it from us. Mm. 
1913, he said, well, World War I's coming. We're going to make an exception. We'll stop after the war. It never stopped. It was too sweet for those in power. Too much good shit for no work. Let the people do the work and we will skate from the fruits of their labor. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not buying it. No, it's not a good thing to pay taxes. It is not a good thing for people to know what you do with your money or where it comes from. This is the worst horror imaginable kids. You young people drive me fucking crazy. I mean, when I was your age, we didn't ask stupid questions. We all knew taxes were wrong. We all knew our government was corrupt. We all knew the media was lying. And we believed nothing and trusted no one, like our parents said. What our parents say? Trust no one. That's the first thing. When I was six, lent some boy of, goddamn, what was it? A toy of some kind? Didn't come back. You trusted him, you idiot. That's what my parents said. We're not going to do anything. You're going to have to learn from, you can't trust anything, including us parents. And if you think you can, you know nothing about history and how <laughs> every fucking Roman emperor was killed by his wife, mother, father, brother, or son. Good God, you can't trust anybody. And you've forgotten that. You people are walking in a dream, lost in your cell phones, missing the reality around you. I mean, people are actually paying attention to politics as if it matters who the president is. Good God, that ah, it drives me crazy. And everybody else my age, I promise you, we sit around going, they actually care. They actually think it matters. Good God, Dwight Eisenhower in 1960 told us when leaving office, the CIA and the military industrial complex are stealing your freedom. You will have none if you do not stop them. And we did not stop them. Our presidents have no power. Please. Listen, you think they do? Well, let's pick an example. Uh, Bush, who um, uh, started the Second Gulf War. You think he started that on it? No, he's a puppet. The CIA saw the rise of um, uh, Saddam as disruptive to their plans in that region. They had a meeting. The, the head of the CIA was not even in the meeting. It was on a Thursday afternoon, and they said... Listen, I want Iraq bombed into oblivion. I want it to start tomorrow. Ted, you and Jay, you know the president, work that. Everybody else gets your congressional teams together for Congress. I want those bombs dropped tomorrow. Jay said, well, what are you going to tell him? He goes, I don't give a shit. Why? If you have to. Nuclear weapons. But God damn it, she makes sure we're bombing those people tomorrow. So they go into George's office and go... Mr. President, I regret to tell you that Iraq has nuclear weapons and missiles capable of delivering them to our closest ally, England. And, Mr. President, we have information that they may actually do this within the next 48 hours. Now, Mr. President, it is not our job as the CIA to uh, uh, advise you. Oh, no, 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 no. Our job is only to tell you the facts. And uh, I'm glad that this is on your shoulders, Mr. President, and not mine. But please, Mr. President, I must remind you of the urgency time-wise of this. Um, imagine London, the entire city laid waste to a nuclear bomb. Well, 8 o'clock in the morning, we started dropping those fucking bombs, didn't we? Were there nuclear weapons? Of course not. Everybody fucking knew it. The world knew it. The American people knew it. The only people who did not know was the president and Congress. Please, God, there's no power there anymore. <laughs> and, and you're watching it. People give a flying fuck who's elected. No, I don't care. You go, what do you think of, of Trump? What do you think of Hillary? Who gives a shit? Doesn't matter. I don't pay them any thought. Why would I give them any fucking thought at all? It's kind of like, what do you think about the derelict on the street that passed out there? Well, I don't give them any fucking thought at all. Same thing, people. Wake up. You're breaking my heart. Seriously, you children. I mean, if I could reach through and throttle you all, I would. you got to wake up. This is the real fucking world, and you're living in a dream. You're watching a stage play. 
that we old folks know is a stage play and you somehow idiotically think it's real. Good God almighty, you need a spanking. Every fucking one. Put down your goddamn cell phones and look around you. Please. Five minutes of reality might change your fucking life. I mean, the only time you put it down is when you're driving, uh, when you're eating, and even then, not always. When you're fucking, ah, and even then I have seen uh, exceptions. No, the rest of the time you're lost. Put the fucker down now and look around you, people. Go into a coffee shop and leave your phone at home and look at the tragedy of 75 people, none of whom are communicating except with the clerk who hands you your coffee and donut. Do you see the tragedy in this? You are, you don't need a brain implant. You're connected now. And that thing is the disinformation device that every dictator in the world has wanted for a thousand fucking years, and it's here. And here's the beauty. You have to pay for it yourself. You gotta pay for your spy device. You gotta pay for that thing which tells you what to fucking do. God damn people, I'm not leaving this world in this shape. I mean, I don't care if I have to come to everybody's house with a goddamn switch. I will not tolerate what's happening. Wake up, kids. Do you know how hard it is for people my age to look back at future generations and see what's coming down the pike? Not on my fucking watch, folks. Not on my watch. So in terms of, like, everybody's on their phones. Like, I- I'm seeing it now. If, you know, when I'm walking around, people like zombies on their phones, pretty much. And I remember, um, uh, I think a while ago, you were on about something, if you go into a porn site, you know, that's it, you've, they've got your details. I was thinking, fuck, I'm fucked here. Um, but what are the things that people can do to protect themselves from this type of thing? Because for the lay person out there, they don't know. I, I don't own a cell phone, neither does Janice, neither does any smart person that I know. First of all, we can't afford it because we would be found instantly. We turn our goddamn phones on and the door would be busted down. We can't have them. So so that's, for us, you know, it's kind of hypocritical. Throw your phones away, whereas we had to. But yet I know many people, massively successful business entrepreneurs, creative, that will not touch one. I won't let one come into the room. People got to leave their fucking phones if they're coming in the goddamn car. Don't bring that thing near me. It's going to listen to me as it's listening to you. If anybody would know, it's me. I'm John fucking McAfee. I I created the world's first computer security company. Now, how could I have done that if I did not myself know what's capable, uh, what is possible in capable hands? And anything is. I know how to break into shit. That's how I knew how to stop people from doing so. How can you design a safe? if you can't crack the best safe in the world. So when I'm telling you, you've got no goddamn privacy and that phone is listening and watching even when it's turned off, you have to believe me, people. You are carrying around with you a tool of dictatorship, which they got you to pay for. How did they manage that shit? And way you ask what to do there is no other course people there is no piece of software there is no piece of hardware nothing that will help you protect you or keep you private and secure other than throw the fucker away and nobody will so that's a moot point and but you- yes if you're serious throw it away do not allow anybody to come close to you that has one Janice and I've been living like that forever we live quite well. We travel, see the world, have a yacht, have fun. We don't have a fucking phone, nor will we ever again have a goddamn phone. We would be insane to do so knowing what we know. I just want you people to know the same thing, and then if you choose to keep it, please. It's your fucking life, not mine. 
but understand what you're doing with your life and what you're doing to your children for fuck's sake. People are addicted to their phones and there's the whole, I've read some articles that, you know, with certain things like Facebook and all that type of stuff that it releases endorphins. It's like the same uh, chemicals as when you get in a cuddle. I think, is it being designed to be this addictive? Because the th oh, no, please. Yes, indeed. Thank you for the observation. Of course, it is designed to do that. I mean, who do you think is really a good guy? So you've got Google, you've got the Android, you've got Samsung, you've got, you've got Apple, please God. If anybody out there is using Apple, shame on you, but whatever, your life. So whatever you have. Now, do you think these companies get to design shit in a vacuum? Fuck no. Government agencies of all sorts come in. The IRS comes in and says, well, listen, you know, we need to know uh, if people are cheating on their income taxes and you have an obligation since you're handing these things out to help us and put into your product uh, those things which uh, help your loving, uh, kind and guiding light of a government. Good God, no. Nobody's free, not even corporations, from the power of the U.S. government. But people use their phones so much for communication. Like it used to be email back in my day. That was quite an advanced concept. But like people like WhatsApp, Telegram, there's even uh, is it Signal, more secure lines. Are they any good or are they just as bad? <laughs> <laughs> They're all the Sorry. same, is it? <laughs> I hear this all time. You are using a, quote, secure encrypted private communication system of any kind, whether it's email, WhatsApp, it is not. It can't possibly be. Do you think our government and the CIA is going to go, oh, I know the secure app will be, no, fuck, they own it. It's theirs. They may not own the company, but I promise you, there's no security from there. People go, why do I use Gmail? It's because Gmail is the one company that they have to get a fucking subpoena for in order to look at my shit. Well, that's that takes some time. WhatsApp? Fuck no. They just log on. Oh, McAfee's sending these messages and saying that. Signal? Oh, please God, there's no such thing as security in encryption or anything else because people there is no more a man in the middle these are designed for people who are in the middle listening to no fuck no they're in your phone already you buy the phone with a spy device sure use whatsapp it's encrypted but don't you have to type it in before it gets encrypted think about it yes the goddamn phone watches you type it in and before you can see it don't you have to unencrypt it to get it on the screen? It doesn't give a shit about the encryption. It watches you type and it reads whatever you read on the fucking screen. People wake up, wake up. Using WhatsApp and Signal merely makes it easier for the CIA to plant the fucking spyware in your phone. No. I mean, any idiot should know that the only reasonably is not safe but safer than most is google because they will still demand a fucking subpoena uh, cia walks into some tiny company like whatsapp and says yeah get the fuck out we want to talk to the ceo listen you're going to do this and the story are we clear uh, yes sir google goes fuck you give us a goddamn court order <laughs> All right. That's the only safety you have. You want a decent email system? There's only one. It's Google. And all that will do is protect you for a month or so while the government gets a subpoena to do what it does without a subpoena. Everyone else, take up kids. You are buying total garbage. It's like me going, I fucked a whale. Ooh, I believe that. <laughs> My system is secure. Ooh, I believe all oh, fucking shit, wake up. You guys are so naive. No, I'm sorry. The answer to the question, there are no secure. People go, proton mail. Oh, you insane. The whole fucking thing is the CIA now. 
Use Proton Mail only if you want the government to know instantly what you're trying to hide from them. Use Google if you know I've got a month before they can get a fucking subpoena. Then <laughs> get a new goddamn email address from Google. All right? Mm. Log on from another IP and you just keep shifting them every 14 days. That's what I do with my important shit. The, the, the public stuff, like you contacted Janice on fire, that's been around forever. We don't say jack shit in that because we know that we're being watched. I mean, I published Google sent Janice a notice saying we are now no longer monitoring your account because of the subpoena that I got from the IRS. Oh, well, fuck me. I don't believe that. Why would they no longer? Well, but they maybe this was Janice's kind of mild politically, I don't know, but I know they're still watching me. But they're only watching the, the accounts they fucking know about. And why do they see you as such a big threat? Because obviously you, you are very but, but well I, known. Because I go on and say things like, don't pay taxes, it's illegal. And if you don't want to, use Monero and a distributed exchange, you'll never have to pay another dime. Now, for some reason... Our government does not like hearing shit like that on public stages. I mean, I've talked to 6,000 people in person on a huge stage and said, stop paying taxes are illegal. You don't want to pay. Use this. They will never fucking know. Well, th th that apparently touched a nerve or something. But they are certainly after my sorry ass. I mean, we got, uh, they convened a grand jury on the 22nd of January. We found out about it and left three days earlier on a yacht, went to the Bahamas because they have no income tax. You can't extradite someone from a country uh, for a crime, which is not a crime in that country. International law, we're safe. So we're there for three months, thumbing up our noses until we get wind that the CIA uh, had recruited Paul Rowe the commissioner of police for the Bahamas. Now, let me tell you, all the Caribbean countries are very corrupt. Their plan was to arrest me on some whatever charge. It wouldn't make any difference. Once I've been arrested, I'm now an undesirable. Got nothing to do with international law. Anybody want this man? Come get him. We left six hours before the raid, went to Cuba. We're there a month and a half. The Cuban government drugged Janice and I in military court and said, the U.S. has... has um, has asked us unofficially to deliver you to America. We are disinclined to do so. However, we have to ask you please to leave our country and never return within 72 hours, which we did. Went to the Dominican Republic, we were fucking arrested on the dock. We didn't even get off the goddamn boat. And they said, we're returning you to America. And I said, it didn't come from America. You cannot return me from America. I came from Cuba. You want to return me to Cuba? Do that. All right? Um, four days in prison, Janice and I and my staff, hired lawyers, managed to just squeak out as they were putting Janice on the goddamn plane to go back when my lawyers finally came in with a writ from the fucking Supreme Court saying, no, you make nothing, Mr. and Mrs. McAfee, until they have their day in court. I won that one instantly. They said, okay, where do you want to go? Because they had fucked up big time. I said, England. On the way to England, I said, Janice, baby, we can't run forever. Please, God. We're going to have to go into hiding for a while. And we've been in hiding seven months. It's like heaven on fucking earth. We eat, we go out, we swim. Well, in the summertime, in the, in the two days of the year, you can swim. Um, we've, we have fun. And we're relaxed. And we made to stay in fucking hiding forever because this is sweet compared to being on the run. Now, the advantage of being on the run is I get to stand up and thumb my nose openly. I'm here in Cuba. Fuck you. Well, that lasted a month and a half. I'm here in the Bahamas. Fuck you. That lasted three. I'm here in the Dominican Republic. Rap. Arrested. <laughs> <laughs> to England, I said, I'm here in England, fuck you, and we went on the ground, and that's the last anybody knows where we are. That's, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a journey. But it, I, the thing is, I suppose, is while you're in hiding, you can do what the fuck you want, I suppose. You can, you can do the videos, you can get your message out there, you can... Plus, I'm much freer 
to say, I mean, I just outed the murder of Jeffrey Epstein. Now, if we were not in hiding, my life expectancy would be about seconds. But try and find our sorry asses, and I get to say what I want. I outed the murderer, Nicholas Tartaglioni. I outed Barbara Sampson, the medical examiner, for cooperating with the conspiracy. I'm about to out every fucking body, and I can do it freely. What the fuck are people going to do about it? <laughs> do you understand? <laughs> the freedom of being in hiding versus the very limited freedom of being on the run. Although being on the run is fun. Jesus, God, that is fun, really. I mean, we kind of miss it a little every now and then. And then I suppose, where you, have you been to the same place for a while, or can you not say? Or Can you help me out for just a second? The reason is, is that this is my first, let me show you here, uh, my first time in our new communications room. Um, mm -hmm. And the new setup, I've got, you know, a 400-pound microphone, I've got everything, except that I don't know where the goddamn camera is. Obviously, you've had a, a big 2019. What can we expect from John McAfee in 2020? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's... Uh, it's my campaign year, isn't it? Um, so you can expect a lot of political shit coming out of my mouth. You'll expect uh, a lot of um, politicians to be outed. I mean, I've been waiting for years. I've got more, of, well, more information on corruption in this world than any human being because that's I, I kind of like a stamp collector. You know, the stamp collector got to have every fucking last stamp ever created, right? I'm kind of like that with corruption. Um, and since I am John McAfee, and since I can find, keep in mind, I, I could not possibly build um, a security system if I didn't know how to break a security system, could I? I'd be a tragic developer. You don't build safes if you can't crack safes. I mean, it's insane. So no, I can get whatever I want, and I do. Not not for illicit purposes, not for blackmail. No, I just want to fucking know. And I, it's time, and I feel it's time. Let's out everybody, everybody involved in Jeffrey Epstein's conspiracy, starting with Nicholas Tartaglioni, who was his cellmate, was moved from the cell just prior to it, given the key, went back in, murdered him at 2.13 a.m., four hours before he was found, staged the scene. Now, oh, Jesus, God, this is how stupid some criminals are. When he staged the scene... He put the noose around Jeffrey's neck, but left Jeffrey on his knees. Now I ask you people, how does a man hang himself on his knees? I mean, it's, it's to me a, a quandary. He did not, obviously. Um, Barbara Sampson, the chief medical examiner, who just happened to show up that fucking morning and say it was a suicide without getting any goddamn information and then going home. Um, yes, she's complicit. The associate warden. I'm naming everybody. I've, had, I'm sorry, I've, I've put three pictures up already of conspirators. Now, I'm going to get lawsuits in the billions of dollars. Why? I mean, um, Barbara Sampson's the chief medical examiner for <laughs> the city of New York. And she's low on the fucking totem pole of people who are about to be outed. So yes, I'm going to get lost, but can't be served because cannot find me. And I don't give a shit anyway. I'm 74 people. You think you can take anything from me? I've got nothing to lose. Do you understand? I've got nothing to lose. Therefore, I will spill whatever I choose to fucking spill as long as it does not in any way harm or potentially harm my wife. And I'm very cautious with those things. But yeah, so what's coming from John McAfee in 2020? A lot of fucking fun, people, I promise you. And I'm having fun with this one. <laughs> I'm throwing a name out, said this guy. So, talk, talk, to me. Murdered, da 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 How did he get the key? And then in a few days, if nobody guesses the name, I'll say, okay, it was so-and-so. And here's how and when and what. And we're going on down the goddamn line until this conspiracy collapses at some point. 
No, unfortunately, we will never get to the top, even though I know the top. Because what happens is those in power cut their losses. And what does that mean? They cut those that are beneath them. Okay. And at that point, there's no more, even though you know, in a, in, a, in a court, nothing will stand up. But I will get as high as I can. I promise you I will get <laughs> Barbara Sampson's two-level bosses up. I promise you this. And do you Anyways, think, that's what I think. And do you think it just go? Does it, do you think the corruption is just littered throughout? Because it seems that they're like the puppet masters in a sense. It's because we've gave them too much power. I mean, they have unlimited power. Our president sits in the Oval Office in the morning and and tells someone to press a button to kill a general over breakfast. Uh, that's some serious fucking power. Um, we give them trillions of dollars off of the backs of our hard-earned of, of wages and the fruits of our labor, and they skate on that. They have the power to bust down my door, haul me off without a fucking subpoena, and the answer is a subpoena. It's fake, and lock me away somewhere where I will never be able to say another word that another human lever here as power we gave them the power and if you know anything about power you will know that power does corrupt and we have these people absolute power and absolute power does corrupt absolutely so yes it is endemic there's not a single person in any uh, position of power within our government who is not corrupt in some way shape or form <laughs> It's see, see, people. I don't care who you're voting in. Nancy Pelosi, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton. They're all the same. You got no goddamn power. The only power they have is to spend the money that the CIA lets them spend to keep them happy. Do you know what the CIA calls presidents? And, and um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The one that gets me is 9-11 because there was a whole bunch of conspiracy things there. There was, I mean, the amount of stuff I've seen on that is like, you know. I can't help you with any of that. That, came, that happened in 2001, I think. Prior to 2012, I can't dig anything up. But after 2012, now, if there's a telephone that's turned on and you're speaking, we're speaking in front of it, you just give me a geolocation and the approximate time, and I can listen to everything you said eight fucking years ago. Now, that's some serious power. Mm. And has it corrupted me? Fuck, I don't know. I mean, I don't have a job. I, I piss people off. I say what I feel. Is that corruption? I don't know. But I'm not the only one with that power, and that's a goddamn problem. The CIA has it. The FBI has it. Uh, the FBI doesn't have it. The NSA has it. NSA's fucking got it. But if they got it, you know I got it. I mean, who fucking builds this shit? Either me or my friends. And so, what time? Oh, oh. okay. We're okay. We for one more question. Okay. Let's go back to the crypto stuff. I think, what do you see for 2020? Uh, you don't have to do a Bitcoin uh, prediction, but what do you see, that how the markets may go, how people may react to the technology? Uh, people start understanding that Bitcoin, it, Bitcoin's an old technology, it's going to help anybody. It's going to be around for a while probably, but Bitcoin, the 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 first blockchain and the concept of cryptocurrency uh, was given to the world through open source. So people took that open source and go, whoa, look what we can do here. Let's add this. Let's add that. Let's add distributed apps. Let's add smart contracts. Let's add privacy. Let's add a whole host of things which have made cryptocurrency the most powerful technology in the world today. He says, most people are not aware they're looking at Bitcoin, which has zero power, clunky, old, and valueless, and therefore crypto has got to be sucky. No, please, God, wake up, folks. Take a look at Monero. Take a look at Ethereum. 
smart contracts, do you realize that I built an entire distributed exchange using nothing but smart contracts? Why? It can't be shut down ever. It has no, no information, not your name, not your email. We don't keep any information on where you're logging in from. Total, complete privacy. We don't charge it. We'll list a coin, press a button, list your coin. No maker fees, one quarter of 1% taker. That's not even going to pay our development costs. This is my gift to you young kids, and you don't fucking deserve it. Now, not very useful right now. We only have Tron and Ethereum. However, in two weeks, we're adding Bitcoin. And by the first quarter, we will have every coin. And it will be the only exchange that people use. I know this for a fact. And that exchange with privacy coins will free you if you have the courage to use them and the wisdom not to buy into government crypto because government crypto is not a based cryptocurrency. It is the end of all privacy and freedoms for the American people. And thank you very much for having me on, friend. No worries, no worries. Brilliant. And where can people go and find you? What's the address for your exchange? Oh, McAfeeDex.com. Cool. M-C-F-E-E-D-E-X.com. That's it. Awesome. It's not very useful now. There's only two coins. What are you going to trade uh, Tron for Ethereum forever? No, no. But as we get all the coins, and it will be. It's in beta test now. It's been in beta for four months. We're coming along fine, and we'll get the real product. We'll roll out first of March. Awesome. That's brilliant. All right. Thank you very much for your time, John. I really appreciate it. And thank you. No worries. Take care. Pretty soon I lull you into a stupor and you will fucking believe anything that I tell you, uh, like I fuck whales. (laughs) It's going to be a a million uh, dollars and um, and women in China have no vaginas. (laughs) 